Suspicious Minds, a song that needs no introduction. <laughs> Sorry, that felt a little bit Alan Partridge. Can I start again? Hello, I'm Adrian. Today I'm looking at the song Suspicious Minds and regular viewers of this channel will know that I frequently like to look at more obscure and alternative songs and artists, but I do on occasion like to look at a classic as well. And I think this song qualifies as a real classic. I'm sure there are many, many other lessons out there on this particular song, but I thought it was worth me taking a look anyway, particularly as there seems to be some debate as to exactly how to play this song properly. And what I'm gonna do is explore some of the options you've got when you're playing this song. And I'm gonna give you my opinion as to how it's played on the original recording. Just a quick bit of background on this song then. Obviously it was made famous by Elvis, but he didn't write the song. In fact, it was originally by a songwriter called Mark James, who made the initial recording, which wasn't successful. Then Elvis recorded it in 1969, became a huge hit. Guitar on the song played not by Scotty Moore, not by James Burton, who are probably the two guitarists most closely associated with Elvis, but guitar on this track was played by somebody called Reggie Young, who was a, a great Memphis session player, a real guitarist's guitarist, I suppose. And I might well look at some more of his stuff in the future, but today I'm gonna to be focusing on Suspicious Minds. Let's get to a close up and I'll take you through how to play it. Let's kick off with that fantastic main riff then. And after much careful listening and some internal debate. This is how I think it's played on the original recording. And there are a couple of other possibilities but I'm pretty sure that this is how it's done. We're in the key of G and it's starting off with this simple E form G bar chord shape. Um, we're actually just playing the lowest four notes in this chord. So we've got a G, a D, another G and then a B. And we're going to need to use some kind of pick and fingers or hybrid picking approach to play this song. I've watched some video footage of Reggie Young and he seems to be a hybrid picker. So I think that's probably going to be your best bet to play this song authentically. Now we're going to play the root note of this chord with the pick and then we're going to play the A string with the pick and then we're going to play the middle two strings with the fingers of your picking hand. So I'm using my middle finger and my ring finger. Then I'm just playing that low root note one more time. So it's pick, pick, fingers, pick. And then we're moving up a couple of frets and we've got this lovely, lovely hammer on idea. And really the essence of this is that we're hammering on into a, a C triad shape. This, this whole song has got a kind of Memphis gospel-y kind of feel. And I think that's partly down to the harmony, which is really just G going to a C and then back again. So it's that one, four, one, a, a classic kind of gospel sound. And what's happening here is we're hammering on from five to seven on the A string. And then we're landing in this little C triad shape. So we've got an E, of the seventh fret on the A string, and then we've got a G and a C. That's the fifth fret on the D and the G string. So that's a first inversion C major triad. We're hammering on into that. So we're playing that with the pick, and then we've got some more notes played with the fingers. So uh, I'm playing the middle two strings again with the middle and ring fingers of my picking hand. Then we're going back to that E note, and then the fingers again, and then finally, the fifth fret on the A string. So it's pick, fingers, pick, fingers, pick. And if you put all of that together, we've got the entire riff. lovely riff slightly tricky to get up to speed I think because you've got to move positions here and you need to do that quite quickly as well so I'd suggest just um, sorting out the fingering sorting out your picking hand and then just gradually building up speed on this so 
that's the main riff. I think the other option with this main riff, and this is the way that I've seen some people do it, is to play it down here in the open position and base it off of an open position G chord and then just hammer down uh, your, your second and your first fingers to create a kind of C over G sound. And I think this is how James Burton plays it on, on the live versions of this song. His part is something like this. So that's another option, but to me on the original recording it doesn't sound like that. It definitely got um, got that kind of sound on the original recording. So that is our main riff. Now that's the intro to the song and also the first part of the verse. And then what happens is we really just take that riff through a 1-4-5 progression in the key of G. So we've we 1-4-5 chords in the key of G. We've got a G, a C, and a D, and we're just moving that riff around. Now we've got a couple of options here when we move to C. The simplest way of doing this would just be to move that riff up to the eighth fret and then play exactly the same thing. So you'd have exactly the same thing, I've just moved everything higher. That's option number one. Option number two would be to play it like this. So that's exactly the same notes, but instead I'm basing it off of this C chord, which is a fifth string root bar chord, and I've moved everything over to the next set of strings, starting on this C bar chord. And then we're hammering up into a, like an F triad shape. So we've got a hammer on this time on the D string from five to seven. And we arrive at this F triad, which is A, C, and F. So we're hammering on. Then we've got the, the pair of uh, notes played with the fingers. Then coming back to that G note at the fifth fret on the D string. So that's our C riff. Um, as far as the, your picking hand goes, that's exactly the same as the G riff. Everything is just moved down to the floor by one string. So th those are your options when you're, you're playing the C riff. As far as what's going on on the original recording, I'm, I'm really undecided on this. Tonally, to me, it sounds like it's probably this. Um, but that instinct is contradicted by the little bit of video footage I could find of Reggie Young playing the riff, where he seemed to be playing it down here based off of this chord shape. So um, whether he did that on the original recording, I'm not exactly sure. Ultimately, probably doesn't make that much difference. So, so far we, we've got the, the riff in G. Just play that twice, then we do the same thing in C. Um, then we're playing the riff in D, and at first I thought it was this. exactly the same riff in D, but I can't actually hear that hammer-on move on the recording, so I think he's probably just sticking with this chord shape and doing something like this. So uh, I'm playing the, uh, the root note D and then A, and then I'm playing the, the B and the G strings together, back to the root, uh, and then I'm just playing the A note at the seventh fret on the D string, and then back to the root note twice, and then A again, and back to the root. So, something like that one and two and a three and four. Then we're doing exactly the same thing two frets lower in C, and back to G. With that, we've got the entire verse riff, if I can just put that together. To 
C or here and then D C back to G so again with, with the D to the C you could play it up here or here so that's the verse that's then repeated um, and then we've just got a little lead in to the chorus which goes like this and that's really just D C B minor back to D again and I'm just playing the the A and the D strings then the two finger notes and back to the root note same thing here And we're on into the chorus. So for the chorus, uh, listening very closely, I can't actually hear much guitar at all, if any, on the chorus. So either Reggie Young just drops out completely on this or the guitar is mixed very, very low because all you can really hear on the recording is the piano. So what I'm doing on the guitar is I'm just playing the basic chords just with some simple bar chords, but I'm not exactly sure what uh, what Reggie Young is doing on the recording so I think that the best solution is just to kind of comp your way through it um, outlining the basic harmony so the, the chords we've got here are C to G B minor and then C D that's, that's the first half and I'm just using a combination of fifth string root and sixth string root bar chords all, all fairly simple stuff um, got some options as to where you play these things you could play six string forms a, a bit higher up the neck if you wanted to again doesn't make too much difference uh, second half of the chorus it starts with E minor then B minor and C and then it ends with this which is a, a D sus4, so it's, it's like a, a D A form bar chord. Put your little finger down at the eighth fret, then lift it up, and then I think it's probably something like that, which is a C over D, so that's just the fifth fret on the, the fifth, fourth, third, and second strings. That just takes you round for the second verse whole thing repeats we've got another verse another chorus um, at the end of the second chorus we, we've got um, this idea it goes so instead of doing the D sus4 we're going to B sus4 down at the second fret So for the middle section or the bridge, whatever you want to call it, we've got a change in tempo and we've also got a change in time signature. So the song slows down quite a bit and we're also changing to a 6-8 kind of a time feel. So I'm just going to take you through the basic chords to start with and then I'm going to discuss your picking options. So we kick off with an E minor chord and we've got a bar of that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm playing this fifth string root E minor bar chord up at the seventh fret. Uh, then we've got a bar of B minor seven. Uh, I'm, again, I'm playing this at the seventh fret, so you can just bar all the way across at the seventh fret and then put your third finger down at the ninth fret on the A string. That gives you a B minor seven. Then we've got a C major chord, a bar of this. Can play this a six string root form or you could play it play it down here it's up to you but we've got a bar of C major then a bar of D moving that same chord two frets higher we go around again E minor three four five six B minor seven then C then D so it's an exact repeat of the same chords and then just at the very end we're going from G to C then G and D 
And the, the voicings that Reggie Young seems to be using on this really nice, nice voicings here, we're actually using... Uh, it's like a C form of the G chord, which is uh, quite you know, a lesser used version of this chord, but actually quite a nice one. So I'm playing the 10th fret on the A string, 9 on the D, 7 on the G, 8 on the B, and then 7 on the high E as well. So I'm just barring across the top three strings with my first finger. So it's a G major chord, but it's in the C form. You can probably see visually how it's derived from this C major chord shape, which we're just making movable and bringing on up the neck. So we've got this, a bar of this, um, and then we're going to C, and I think Reggie Young is actually doing this. So it's it's actually a C chord with a G in the bass. So technically it's a second inversion of this chord. So it's 10th fret on the A and the D, 9 on the G, and then 8 on the top two strings. So a bar of that, then we're back to this G, and then just a bar of D, we're back to 4-4 four, four time and then we go back into the, the other feel uh, for the rest of the song. So those are the basic chords. Now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the picking options for this. So if you're playing with a band then you can be quite minimal in this section and I think that's really what Reggie Young seems to be doing. He's really just doing something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three. So he's just playing these little hits or accents on, on beat four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four. Um, if you wanted to fill that out a little bit more you could maybe arpeggiate some of the notes in the chord, maybe go one, two, three, four, five, six. sounds quite nice as well. Um, the really interesting thing is happening when he goes to this this G chord here and we've got this kind of idea. So some really nice hybrid picked stuff going on here. So if you hold down this G chord grip we've got the root note and then with the fingers of my picking hand I'm playing the middle two strings and then back to the root note. Oh, a little bit out of tune there, sorry. And then uh, with my fingers I'm playing the G and the B, picking the D, and then with fingers I'm playing the top two strings and then moving that up to the B and the G and then up again to the G and the D. So just, just slow, it's probably easier if you watch this rather than I try and explain it, but we've got... So it's pick, fingers, pick, fingers, pick, and then fingers, fingers, fingers. So really nice chiming kind of a sound there. Then you can just do the same thing when you go to this uh, C chord with, with the G in the bass. Uh, and then you're back to the, the G chord again. So all of that section is to D. So really beautiful that part of the song. So since you asked the gear I'm using in this video and I actually read on the internet that Reggie Young used a Gibson Super 400 on this recording. A guitar which strangely enough originally belonged to Scotty Moore. I'm not sure exactly how that came about but as usual here I'm making do with the gear that I've got to hand. So the guitar I'm using is my Fender Jazzmaster, which is a 65 or a 66 reissue. I can never remember 
exactly what, but I have done a video on this guitar if you'd like a bit more information. Um, from the guitar I'm going straight into the amp which is a Vox AC30 which is a 1990s reissue. Um, I probably do a video on that amp at some point in the future. Not using any effects pedals whatsoever and I think that sometimes the best tone you can get is just a guitar going straight into an amp. You don't always need effects pedals. Remember that kids. That's about it for today. I hope you have some fun learning to play this song. What I hope I've made clear is that there's not necessarily one definitive way of playing this song. What you have is a series of different options and I suggest you explore those options and find out what works best for you. If you've enjoyed this video, do check out some of the other videos on this channel. I've looked at a couple of other Elvis songs before, I think, featuring Scotty Moore. Also looked at quite a few James Burton things. So seek out those videos if you feel so inclined. Tab for this one is going to be up on my Patreon page. Thank you for watching. Bye!